All right, everyone. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello, Internet. We are the Blockchainers, and um, we're coming at you straight out from Gangnam in Seoul, Korea. Uh -huh. And today, we have a very, 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 very special guest, the man of the hour, out to devour. Yes, Dominic. Welcome. Yep. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're welcome to the show, Dominic. So, so, so um, how are you feeling today? Tired. Yeah. A busy day, but I think I'm pretty excited for this interview. Mm -hmm. See, see the reaction of the community and what yeah. it can take. Is it your first interview or? Uh, it's my first like video recorded interview. Oh, really? But before that, I, I did other interviews. Okay. Like, yeah. Over the phone. And stuff yeah. So yeah. Cool. Interesting. Thanks. Okay. Oh, let's get straight into the interview then. Yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dominic, people will be curious about your background and stuff. So, uh, could you tell us like when and why did you get into blockchain space, and like what have you done before co-founding IOTA? Yeah, for sure. So, 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 I'm 21 years old. So I've been in this blockchain space since 2011. I seriously got into it in 2012. Like in 2011, I was kind of in this in this like gaming and hacker scene where where people introduced me to the Bitcoin white paper. And at first, like my English wasn't good enough, and and, and so I obviously couldn't really understand what it was about and so on and so forth. But then I just like started reading into it. I remember reading this white paper on mining where they were like talking about FPGAs, ASICs, and so on and so forth. Uh -huh. And it's kind of how I really got into it then. And so in 2012, uh, uh, I had a startup which was focused on something like completely unrelated to blockchain, but we had AWS credits, Amazon Web Services. It was like ten thousand dollars worth of AWS credits, and what we did then is, is there was this new coin coming out, which, which was called ProtoShares, mm -hmm. and so we were like, yeah, like fuck it, let's mine it. Yeah. And so, so, so we we raced to 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 get all of those GPUs set up, uh -huh. and so we mined ProtoShares, and so it was quite profitable. Uh -huh. And so from that experience, we we, we kind of realized like, hey, this this blockchain stuff, it's it's quite serious, and and you can do some really interesting stuff in it. And I was always very entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. so, so I'm, I'm very like, focused on like, being independent, just building awesome stuff, not being bored of life. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, and so what I did then is with all of the money that they made and with some investor money, I, I, I wanted to do my first blockchain startup. Okay. It was in 2013, end of 2013. And so, so I went to Switzerland, I had good connections to the Ethereum people, so mm -hmm. the Ethereum founders. And so they came to me and said like, hey, like, we, we're setting up this crypto valley in Zug. So back then it was only three or four companies. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I think the fourth or the fifth company to go to Zoo to, to like help build the crypto land. Mm -hmm. But things didn't turn out so well and they lost like half a million dollars mm -hmm. in the end. So, so, so you mean your, your startup? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I, I, I failed in it because I was trying to set up a fiat exchange, like a cryptocurrency exchange so that you can buy and sell tokens. Because yeah. I, you know, I was thinking like, I'm, I'm going to make so much money with it. <laughs> uh -uh. And, and, and so, so the biggest problem was I was like banking, legal, regulatory stuff, like all of the hardcore shit. And it was only 18 years old back then. Like every time you went to a bank office, I just like told you like, hey, never come back again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, because it's like, uh, hey, Bitcoin is for money laundering, it's for drugs. It's completely wow. against our internal policy. Wow, wow. And so it was quite crazy. Well, but I, I really, I, I didn't give up, obviously. Even though today everyone goes to Switzerland to raise like their hundred billion dollar ICO. But, but I, I realized that like this is really here to stay. And it's not just about Bitcoin, but it's so much more. And that's kind of how I heard it and came, came, to, came, came around actually. Yeah. But some, something else that, that I should probably mention is like my pro gaming kind of history. Yeah. So it was actually number one in Call of Duty. When yeah, it was it's cool. Ford. Yeah, it's just kind of cool. It's, it's like a humble brag. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so I was number one in Call of Duty, and, and so that was with 14 or 15. And so I was really into gaming back then. Uh -huh. uh, and so I'm hoping to, to go back to gaming after Iona. After Iona? After it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of stable. After you make it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's going to take how many years? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like years? so much suffering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Okay. And like what kind of aspect, what aspect of blockchain that got you interested? Why did you like blockchain? Yeah, so, 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 so obviously I wasn't driven by making money. So, so I, I didn't enter this space to become a millionaire. 
so so. The main reason why I entered is really because I was encompassed by this permissionless innovation. Like anyone can participate, anyone can contribute towards this economy. Mm -hmm. and, and back then I had my own startup, I had to pay my own developers mm -hmm. and, and I had to go through some other ways to pay them. Mm -hmm. So because I wasn't 18, I couldn't open a PayPal account. Uh, so, 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 it's, so, so through that you're, you're really like discriminated, right? You can't do anything until you're 18. Right. But with Bitcoin and, and with cryptocurrencies in general, like you, you were really empowered. Because now you can just pay anyone. It doesn't matter who you, who you are, you can have your own wallet. Mm -hmm. Machines can have their own wallets. People, no matter their age or whatever, can have their own wallet. And, and that's truly empowering. And that's just really what, what drove me, like this permissionless innovation. And that, this was what, that's really what I'm trying to foster with IOTA as well. Especially with the IOTA Foundation. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Why don't you ask the questions? Right now, right now the um, chat room is going insane because of uh, technical limitations. <laughs> so I'm focusing on that right now. But anyways, um, yeah. yeah. When, and, uh, when and how was IOTA born? So IOTA came out of a hardware startup. So we have a hardware startup which is called Jin which is focused on developing a new trinary based hardware. Mm -hmm. and, and so our focus since the beginning was really on the Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. And because the founding team of IOTA is very complementary, so we have Sergey Ivanchenko, who's like the really hardcore computer scientist, and probably one of the few uh, uh, blockchain experts in as well. Mm -hmm. And so he developed NXT, the first full proof of stake blockchain. Oh, so he has this like really deep technological knowledge. Then we have Sergey Popov, who's the mathematician. Who like specialize in probability, which is all about consensus algorithms, and, right. and 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 then me and David, who are like very technical but also very entrepreneurial and business driven. Mm -hmm. so, so we came together and and, and realized that like, hey, everything that is out there today, it, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. When it comes to scalability, we have huge issues. We have transaction fees, which are, which are still like like varying too much. And when it comes to the internet, the things you simply can't run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any software on it. And that's, that's how IOTA came to be. And so, so the thinking behind IOTA is obviously like, hey, we have this one dimensional blockchain, like this sequential chain. It's obviously the main limiting factor. Like the blockchain in the blockchain is the limiting factor. Mm -hmm. And so then we came up with a 10 concept, which is like this multi dimensional thread, uh, a mesh. And that sounds like one transaction references two past transactions. Mm -hmm. And we use a DAG, mm -hmm. the Tangle. Yeah. And that's how it was born in 2015. Okay. And, and should it tell about the ICO or something? Um, yeah, we're gonna ask oh, that so, question later, okay. probably. Um, yeah, but, but the question is, why did you um, what, why did you focus like particularly on the Internet of Things? What, why, why? Yeah. So, 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 so the Internet of Things is, is everything, right? So it's this ubiquitous computing platform. Everything is going to be connected, and there's so much potential. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a trillion dollar industry, and and the Internet of Things today is still it's in infancy. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it's just a concept for most of it sometimes. And there's nothing concrete, so as such as like a green field. Mm -hmm. So we, with a new protocol, with new hardware, can really enter the space, this space, this, this ecosystem, and start like being one of the early adopters who are really also there to define it, like, like blue ocean. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Internet of Things is also very, like, like, we are truly passionate about it. Like, fuck computing, making it possible for all of us that dumb actors to create a network, and through that network you get this bottom-up intelligence. Mm -hmm. That's really what drives us. And, and, and yeah, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So we only do stuff that, that we really find interesting. Mm -hmm. We don't do it for the money. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, but in your profile, like, you are um, interested in e-governance and collective intelligence. Can you tell us like how um, collective intelligence is kind of like, is related to the IoT? So, so it's really just swarm intelligence stuff. We have, yeah. where, where, where machines start sharing data with each other and they collectively start making better decisions. Like for example, we are really focused on, on, on security of things. Mm -hmm. And what you could do then, you, there's some interesting things where how, we, how the collective of the machines can start quarantining other machines that are disbehaving, mm -hmm. not according to the protocol. And I think that is really interesting for the Internet of Things that for one is there to make smarter decisions mm -hmm. and for another is there to really secure it. Uh, but, but collective intelligence for me is also like this human aspect. Like humans start interacting with each other, they start like sharing data. Like, for example, there's a hole in the street, you start sharing that, hey, there's a hole, someone should fix it. It's also kind of just collective intelligence to build up a better world. Mm -hmm. But collect collective intelligence and e-governance is more like a uh, personal interest mm -hmm. of mine. I, I don't do it professionally or so. Okay. E-governance was, was I, I developed one of the first voting applications on top of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And it's like an analysis on how expensive it would be to, to host like an election. Mm -hmm. 
and it's, it's just really interesting you know, solving a big problem because I've never voted in my life. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're like, and you just become like, yeah, like, like, like you have. To, you have to leave your home, right? You have to leave your computer, and, and then yeah. you have to stay in a queue, and just vote, like fill out the paper bios, like that's stupid. And, and, and like e-governance powered by blockchain makes a lot of sense, which is why I got into it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's get more into a technical question, probably. I think you, um, we have said on your blog that the IoT itself, but you, you just mentioned it as well, came out of a hard, hardware startup, which is working on a new trinary microprocessor yeah uh, so my question is what is trinary and how did the um, hardware sort of evolve into like the blockchain sort of called IoT? yeah so, so so one thing to mention is that that gin is really like a stealth startup so, so we can't publicize too much about it mm -hmm. but we'll probably have the first prototypes ready by the end of this year hopefully mm -hmm. and 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 so trinary is, is really like we have three states mm -hmm. and and when you look at the radix economy like, like you have this gaussian curve you start realizing that hey, like three states is the most optimal way to represent data, okay. and and so binary was most is, is is inferior to trinary when it comes to representing data. So as such, is much better for computation storage, and when it comes to the Internet of Things, always like energy efficiency is everything, and there's some very very interesting applications that you can now then also start doing with with machine learning and so on and so forth. And which is why when we realized that, hey, when it comes to the Internet of Things, for computing and so on and so forth, we can really bring forth a completely new system, complete new architecture, wow. which brings to it like, great benefits. Yeah. And, but one thing to mention is that the hardware startup is, is independently of IOTA. So IOTA is like its own beast right now, like its own ecosystem. Mm. And the hardware startup is always like, like an integral part of it, and also an, an integral part of our vision of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So about the trinary trinary aspect like are there any like you said you said that it's, it's better optimized for data so yeah. are there any like papers or any, are there anything yeah, that we, we could read like if you read some, yeah if you read the art of computer programming by knut okay he will mention it there it's just so oh yeah, wow yeah exactly and like that that is kind of seen as the bible of computer science and then after that for starting from there like people started writing papers on where was a lot of research so, done yeah so, so it was actually developed by, by the russians i think the first computer was called saturn that was in the 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. but, but then also the Soviet Union didn't have the funding to continue it, and then binary kind of became the standard. Mm -hmm. But I can share with you some papers afterwards as well. So oh, it's yeah. really fascinating stuff, okay. how you can represent data with it. But what are the best benefits of using trinary then? Yeah, really like the energy, en energy, en energy efficiency that you gain from it. Like you, you can do more with less. Wow. Yeah. And it's, as such, it's perfect for the internet of things. Okay. Yeah. I think it's quite, um, quite a very, very new approach. I mean, yeah. The really like, actually in the blockchain space is like, think big about using trinary. Exactly, exactly. It's funny because some people started ridiculing us on, on Twitter, even though like they had a very unedicated opinion about it. <laughs> um, and so, so, so it makes sense. Yeah. And, and we, the thing about blockchain is, is nobody knows what you're doing. And, and as such, you just have to try. Yeah. And, and, and you have to dare to try. Yeah, I think you're exploring yeah. a lot of different fields. Exactly, time. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to speed up the innovation, right? You, you just can't say like, like hey, like, that's too dangerous. Right. Oh, obviously, like at the end of the day, like there's so much money behind, so you have to be right. careful like the actions that you take. Right. Yeah. Uh, but well, Trinity is not security related any in, in anyhow. It's really just about adoption in that sense. Right. Um, one of the criticism I say on Reddit probably is that the trinary. Uh, if you use trinary, you might not be able to use some um, tools that are. Uh, specifically designed for binaries, and then there's not not mu much like ecosystem to support. Yeah, so, so 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 it's not that we are developing a complete new ecosystem. So yeah. so we we are still based. We, we can still work with, with binary based hardware. Mm -hmm. And so so IOTA it's trinary based and it runs on your computer, right? So, so there's not a huge problem there. Right. There's some other problems, but I'm not an electrical engineer. Uh -huh. I don't think that we will face big adoption problems. So, so what we are also doing is we're going to open source the dedicated hasher for IOTA, the Trinary hasher, kind of like an ASIC, so that any hardware manufacturer can easily integrate it into their machines. Does the success of IOTA depend on the adoption of Trinary? No, yeah? no, not at all, not at all. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because I've, I've never heard about Trinary. Before IOTA, really, yeah. like, like nobody did, right? Or like right. nobody in the space did. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm definitely we're willing to like study more about it. Yeah. There's yeah. just there's just so many um like fringe technology mm. that comes into blockchain. I mean. Yeah. Like, exactly. I mean, what was it like? 
the Byzantine generals problem, you would never encounter that unless you did distributed computing. Yeah, Paxos totally. and Wrath, like, what, what the hell is exactly. that? <laughs> yeah. But it is fascinating about it because now everyone kind of like really starts getting a CS education mm. through blockchain. Yes, yeah, right? sir. Yes, sir. Which is crucial. Uh, so I think um, quite many things that you do is quite unconventional. Even in terms, even even in the blockchain <laughs> industry, right, where everything yeah, yeah. is kind of un unconventional. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're at the but extreme side. Right, yeah, right. Do, do, do you mean from the tech side or from the community side or how we run IOTA? Ah, uh, from tech side. I mean, okay, different yeah. technologies that you. Yeah, absolutely, but it makes sense, right? You, you have, because if the funny thing is only up until last year, people start to realize, like, hey, like this stuff doesn't scale. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you have to be unconventional to really like, push the innovation forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are leading. I, I, I do argue that we are one of the, the leading projects when it comes to like, bringing forth new innovations to the space. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. we agree. I have a, I have a question. So that like, Yonghun Yong -Hun actually studied this for like, study IOTA for several weeks. Like I just got into it like just a couple days ago. Yeah. I've been I've been reading whatever I can. Um, for somebody who's coming from a blockchain background, how would you best describe IOTA to them? Yeah, so, so, so perhaps I should make the two major distinctions of blockchain versus IOTA. So so obviously blockchain. Perhaps let's start with explaining what the blockchain is in very basic terms. How how it works. So we have the sequential chain, block after block after block, mm -hmm. where the miners are racing against each other to get the next block. They aggregate the transactions in the block, append it, and then it's always like validated by the entire network. And if you make a transaction, you have to interact with the miners. They say like, hey, input my transaction next block. Here's the transaction fee for it. Then you wait for some time and it magically gets accepted. In, in IOTA, it's obviously completely different. So, so the first difference of IOTA versus blockchain is no longer the sequential chain. It's this directed acyclic graph. Mm -hmm. and, and as such, uh, the, the thing about blockchains is that you serialize the confirmation. Mm -hmm. And in IOTA, it's a very asynchronous network. That means that transactions get confirmed at the same time. Because it's always like asynchronous and, and there's no single entity, no, like no validators that validate every 10 minutes in cycles. Mm -hmm. So that's the ma first major distinction. The second major distinction is always like, hey, how do we achieve consensus? Like I said, previously we have those miners that are there to do mo most of the consensus work, the validation work. And in IOTA, we, we're more democratizing than that. We say like, hey, we don't have any miners, but, but every network participant is also actively participating in the security and in the consensus of the system. Mm -hmm. So if you execute a transaction in IOTA, you, you, you get two transactions which are currently unconfirmed, you confirm them, and as such you're contributing to the system. You're confirming transactions and you're securing the tangle. Mm -hmm. And as such, uh, the transaction making process is no longer decoupled from the consensus, but it's inherently part of the protocol. Yeah. And yeah, so, so it's pretty, IOTA is pretty simple. One point is that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, yeah, I think yeah. The tangle is yeah. like one of the most unconventional data structure that we've seen in blockchain space. Right, right. It's not even a blockchain, right? Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. A blockchain without the blocks and without the chain. Yeah, uh, it's like kind of cool. So like, when I first saw it, like I thought it was really cool, but like at the same time, I had a doubt. I mean, is that really gonna work? Yep. Right. So my question is that okay, before that, uh, what are the um, benefits of using the data structure? I mean, called Tangle, what are the main benefits compared to other sort of one-dimensional blockchains? Yeah, so, so it's obviously incredibly scalable. So, so we, 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 we parallelize the confirmations. And, and the beauty of the Tangle is that the larger the network gets, the, the, the faster the, the trans transactions get confirmed, and as such, we have to achieve much higher transaction throughput. So we always say that IOTA scales horizontally. The more nodes you add, the faster it scales. And that's one of the first major advantages. The second one is no transaction fees. Mm -hmm. So so we don't have any miners to subsidize. And as such, because you're contributing to the system, you don't pay any fees. Mm -hmm. and, and that's incredibly, incredibly interesting for any business that runs on top of IOTA. Because you, the promise that you have with Ethereum or with, with Bitcoin is that the more popular it gets, the, the higher trans, uh, the transaction fees and, and the more useless it gets to a larger number of the developers. Mm -hmm. Because your dApps can no longer run. It's an unprofitable business model. But I already have this determ the determinism. So like if you send one cent, you receive one cent, and as such, you know that your business model at the end of the day is going to be profitable. As such, IO is the only protocol that allows uh, micropayments today. Mm -hmm. Nothing else can do micropayments. Yeah. And, and, and so, so, so the, the, the third advantage is partition tolerance. Mm -hmm. So you can start branching off the main tank and do transactions in this offline environment, which is also incredibly interesting for, for, for the Internet of Things. 
because the Internet of Things is this asynchronous network. Mm -hmm. We don't have one like main uh, network protocol. But we have different mesh networks. Okay. Such makes a lot of sense to, to use IOTA for that, for, for, for partitioning. Mm -hmm. And we are also quantum secure because we use Winternet signatures. But that's mm -hmm. less tangled, more IOTA, mm -hmm. the okay. specific implementation. Right. Um, then, like, my biggest question and doubt is that the thing that in, in Bitcoin, for example, the reason you put like different a set of transactions into a block and make a block in, in every ten minutes is that try to sort of like one of the reasons is that try to uh, prevent the double spend. Exactly. It's like how 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 does Ayuta spend on um, prevent the double spend? Because we don't have it's asynchronous. We don't know that the same output has been spent. Yeah, exactly. So, 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 so blockchains require timestamps right. to, to to solve the, the double spending issue. Right. And in Iota, the beauty is that we don't need timestamps. So to, to we don't need transaction ordering to solve the, the double spending issue. Mm -hmm. And the way that we all, uh, all, uh, 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 solve it is really through, through this kind of self-regulating mm -hmm. environment. So we say that, hey, like, if you validate a transaction, you really are checking if it's a double spend or not. But if you make a mistake or like you're a, mil malicious, ma a malicious actor that says like, hey, I want to start confirming my double spends, mm -hmm. then someone else will come along and they see like, hey, like you uh, reference an, an, an invalid transaction, it was a double spend, and as such, you're no longer no longer going to confirm it. Mm -hmm. and, and through that, we're really solving the double spending issue. So in IOTA, also, it's, it's also like if 33% of the network uses an, uh, a biased uh, tip selection algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, then, then you can start, then you, then you start having problems okay. with double spends. Yeah. But, but it's, it's the same with Bitcoin, with blockchain. I think, it, I think there was recently a paper that put it at like 41% or something. Yeah. Uh, by, by Sir Grunspan. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an interesting thing. So basically, uh, for your case, um, for Bitcoin, it's like 40, like 51, whatever. Yeah. But for your case, it's like 33% of the uh, yeah. side. The participant should use the... Uh, uh, right, exactly. Yeah. Use the same, same algorithm. Sorry? So it's, it's more like... So, so, so it depends on, on, on like, so we have the MCMC um, algorithm, so, so Markov Chain Monte Carlo, which is the tip selection algorithm. And so the security of the system really is kind of, uh, uh, it's based on this tip selection algorithm. So that it randomly selects two transactions in this tangle. Mm -hmm. And if you start having a biased tip selection algorithm, then, then you start having problems. Which is why we always say that, hey, 33% of the network uses our tip selection algorithm, we're fine. Mm -hmm. Which is also why right now we have to use the coordinator, because the mean security assumption of the IOTA tangle is that we have a large enough network. Right. And as such, we also need a lot of transactions per second right. to, to achieve the security, which is kind of like completely opposite of blockchain, right? And the coordinator is right now protecting against some of those attacks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. then let's get uh, to the question of coordinator. Can you explain to the viewers what um, coordinator is and why why you need it? Yeah, so, so, so the coordinator is a node that is run by the IOTA Foundation, so it's like a co completely normal node, and what it does is it, com it, it issues milestones inside this. And those milestones basically reference the valid subtangle in the, in, the, in, the, in the entire time. So they basically uh, do this checkpointing where we say like, hey, these transactions are valid, network, please check it, validate it. So, so it's still a very decentralized network, but the entire network still does the validation. Okay. And, and, and right now the coordinator is really there to make it possible for the network to grow. Because if, if we didn't have a coordinator, you could always make some attacks against the network. And we need to have this ability to, to kind of uh, uh, make it possible for the network to grow in order to be self-sustainable. Mm -hmm. So you, so you don't run into security issues. Mm -hmm. So people kind of criticize um, you having that coordinator because uh, I the, the, I think there are two main reasons. First is closed source, and yeah. the second is that the because um, uh, we gotta trust you. I mean, so you gotta trust Ayeda. So yeah, foundation to like. Yeah, to, be, to be honest, exactly. But, but like the second argument, at the end of the day, we we we, we have to trust the humans that that, that that are behind it, right? Because <laughs> because the entire system depends on our ability to execute. So right. so all of those theoretical attacks, like oh shit, like this is completely closed source and this is completely private, is mm -hmm. is not right. Okay. It's stupid because like 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 Vitalik is also kind of a single point of failure of, of Ethereum, right? Yeah, and, and so you, uh, humans are, are a bigger security threat than, than, than the, te uh, the technology itself. Okay. But so, so to answer your, your closed source question, the main reason is obviously the, the, the coordinator is, is short term. We want to completely get rid of it as soon as possible. And mm -hmm. right now we're developing this Oracle platform on top of IOLA. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the uh, uh, coordinator is going to be an Oracle in the future. 
There's a brown body IO definition that's kind of like a multi-signature, and it's very transparent, and, and yeah. But right now it's also really about copycat protection mm -hmm. and, and making sure that there's not a scam running around. Okay. Copying the, uh, the technology and like making it bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. But why did you make it closed source? I mean, is there any other way that you can actually make it open source? So we are actually thinking about making it open source right. as soon as possible. Yeah. So, so we, we, we're working on that. Right. But yeah. our intention is really to completely replace it with the Oracle that we're setting up. Because an Oracle makes also more sense in that, in that way. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, can you elaborate more on Oracle replacing uh, the coordinator? So it's like a, it's pretty simple, right? So, so it's an Oracle that continuously does, that, that has its own consensus between the different, so that we can, for example, have three uh, different uh, participants in, in, in the coordinator Oracle, and they have their own consensus, like it's simple quorum voting, okay. quorum-based voting, and then they vote on, on, the, on what's the next milestone, and then they, they issue the mask on and the entire network validates it. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool concept and it's always more transparent in that way. Okay. What are the kind of like time timeline of like... So it, it largely mask? depends on, on when we uh, have our Oracle network ready. Okay. So, so we hope to have something ready soon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I can't give any, any, any estimates. Right? Yeah, got it. Yeah. Uh, then like, next question is, is, is also about Tangle, right? Um, what types of nodes there are in Tangle? Do you have the um, nodes that source all the um, transaction history? Yes. So, 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 do you mean right now or in the future? Uh, probably right now and your like ultimate goal. Right. So, 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 right now we only have one reference implementation. Okay. Uh, reference implementation of IOTA. So, everyone has the same software. There's no like nodes. Right. So, what we have is the, the, the full node. And you store the entire history, but what we do is we do those snapshots where you where we basically are able to discard the entire database, the, the entire history. And what we do is we just aggregate the transactions to, to, to the latest state. Okay. Yeah, so, so like this address has this balance and it then gets into the snapshot and it's actually able to delete the entire history. But obviously in the future we're going to have a very different set of uh, 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 clients. So one of them is going to be like normal full nodes. We're doing the full validation. They are also going to continuously participate in snapshots. So we have the full nodes, then we have the perma nodes. So the perma nodes are really there to store the entire history constantly, mm -hmm. and and we're actually incentivizing those. So you on a paper query base. So if you, for example, want to search the the, the IOTA history from 2016, you can interact with the perma node and you you paper query that you make to them. Okay. And then we're also developing swarm clients. So where a bunch of IT devices can come together to build up a full node. So they're like uh, uh, reducing the hardware and the resource requirements by, by, by adding those, those, those devices into a cluster. Okay. And make up the full node and also live nodes. Okay. So apparently there's a permanent node which is stores all the transaction history. Yeah. And there will be a node that only stores the snapshot of the um, so, so, probably so, the current So, so, so then, we, then we have nodes that are going to participate in the snapshots continuously. How big is it, the database right now? Right now it's stream. like four or five gigabytes. Yeah. It's not it's not that much. Mm -hmm. And unlike others which which are like I think the Bitcoin blockchain is like two hundred or how much is it? So I think it's like um hundred twenty. Hundred twenty. I don't know, I'm not sure, but I say more than hundred uh, yeah. gigabytes apart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nobody yeah. runs a Bitcoin full node. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we yeah. try to run one before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um yeah. It's quite interesting. Like I don't completely understand how like the consensus works in the. Um, so basically, how consensus works in Tangle is that every node who wants to send a transaction should verify the previous two transactions. So, so 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 when it comes to consensus, I think we need to discuss like transaction finality. Like when is a transaction accepted by the entire network? Right. So in in, in blockchains, we we have this heuristic that says like after X blocks, you mm -hmm. can be sure that your transaction is completely confirmed. Right. And so in Bitcoin is six blocks. Right. So you have to wait on average six to minutes for it to, to confirm. And in IOTA, we, we have a more uh, uh, fluid or, or I would say more dynamic approach to transaction finality. So instead of saying like, hey, you have to wait six minutes or you have to wait six blocks, the main interest is obviously you want to check, hey, when is the node confirmed? When, when is there a reference from all of the unconfirmed transactions, from all of the tips to my transaction? So in order to, 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 de to determine the confirmation status, what you do is you start, so let's say that you started issuing your transaction right now. Right. What you do now is you start listening to the entire network. 
So now other people are starting making transactions and obviously they're starting to indirectly or directly reference your transaction. Mm -hmm. And as such, they're securing it. And this compounding weight in IO is really crucial to the security of the, of, of the transaction. So what you do then is you start listening to the entire network and then in order to, to determine the confirmation status. Right now, as you, you execute the MCMC algorithm, so the TIP selection algorithm, mm -hmm. you execute it a hundred times. Mm -hmm. So you then from those hundred tips that you got from those hundred transactions, mm -hmm. you check if there's an indirect or direct path to your transaction. If there is, you, you make a check and say like, hey, like this transaction confirmed my transaction. As such, you can uh, secure it, okay. participate in the consensus. Yeah. And as such, you can start really easily determining the security. So like if, if you, you execute the MCMC algorithm a hundred times, if 50 out of those 100 times there's a path to your transaction, it's like 50% secure, right? Okay. There's a 50% probability that, that it will be completely confirmed or, or, or it will never be confirmed. Mm -hmm. And if it's an, it, or if it's 100%, it's in, the, in this global state in IOTA. So global state in blockchain is also like incredibly important because everyone is supposed to have this global state. Yeah. The same transactions in a database. Right. And, and in IOTA, we, we have this concept of eventual consistency. So after a certain period of time, everyone in the network is going to have the same global state. Mm -hmm. But in this high throughput transaction environment, only a certain number of nodes are going to have all of the transactions. Mm -hmm. So, so they, they're kind of build, building up their own cluster, their own mesh, mm -hmm. and tra confirming transactions. And then as the, node, uh, as the transaction gets propagated to, to, to the entire network, other clusters are starting to confirm it, and it's such it becomes confirmed by the entire network. That's how we achieve consensus okay. in IOTA. Well, it sounds for me as really a more it's like really dynamic. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so it's, it's not that strict. Because the problem of, of blockchain is, is so, blockchains are always also eventually consistent, but they don't use it to their advantage. Uh, uh, which is why blockchain is a very rigorous approach to consensus, which also means that you're really hindering the scalability. In IOTA, the main bottleneck is the network propagation. Like, how can it propagate the transactions throughout the entire network? Mm -hmm. In blockchain, the bottleneck is really the consensus. Fine. Because you, you can only do X transactions per second. Okay. Yeah. So how many um, transactions per second uh, do you think you can? Yeah, so, so, so right now we've benchmarked it at 1,000 transactions per second okay. with the coordinator. Mm -hmm. Because the coordinator is right now the main bottleneck. But what, we, what, what we're doing is with our simulations that we're running on, on the supercomputer, we were always able to achieve much, much higher transactions per second. Right. The goal is really to achieve infinite number of transactions per second through economic clustering and our dedicated hardware. Okay. Yeah. But, but the goal is really to have this by 2020, kind of. Okay. Um, I want to ask the question about light client. So, because uh, the IOTA is, should be used for mainly for IoT devices, which is sort of a limited storage, batways yeah. kind of stuff. So I think you got a sort of official way of say, uh, managing resources for the uh, live, live client. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, 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 so one thing to emphasize is that not every machine is going to be a full node. So your coffee machine is not going to be a full node. Do you have a coffee machine? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so it's not going to be a full node, right? right? But the beauty of IOTA is, is that the transaction making process is divided into three steps. Mm -hmm. Signing, tip selection, and proof of work. And those three steps can be done by three different machines. And obviously our, our vision is this machine economy where, where machines start really interacting and working with each other. So, so when it comes to the signing, your coffee machine can have a wallet because it can sign any transaction it wants. So it can have an IOTA balance. Yeah. When it comes to the tip selection, it, it, it can be either a cluster of devices, uh, uh, swarm clients, or it can be a full node that you interact with. Most of the time it's going to be a small hub in your home okay. and all of your devices in your, in, your, in your vicinity here, they're connected to the small hub for the tip selection and for other like, like state queries. And the proof of work can be done by an FPGA, by an ASIC, and as such can be completely outsourced. And do, uh, through that, IOTA is really much, much more lightweight than anything out there today. Wow, yeah. so okay. So basically, uh, if you imagine the smart home where all the smart IoT devices are in, in, the home, in the home, and then they can sort of like, each device can um, like uh, carry out different functions. Of yeah, exactly, exactly. Like it, it, it's really this machine economy. One has this, the other needs it. Okay. And they start like doing even economic transits with each other. Okay. Yeah, paying for services. Then can you think of um, a situation where those kind of small devices outsource the uh, mining function to sort of like a centralized kind of like mining, dedicated mining So, 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 so the best example is the car. Mm -hmm. So in the car we have those different ECUs. 
And, and, and ECU is obviously a very lightweight machine, so, so you can't do the proof of work. Mm -hmm. But the, the beauty of the car is that we have FPGAs. So, so we also have like, dedicated GPUs inside the car that are there to do the computation. Right. And as such, the ECU inside the vehicle mm -hmm. is able to outsource the, the computation to an FPGA inside the vehicle. Yeah. As such, as two machines inside the, inside the, the car mm -hmm. that are like, interacting with each other. Wow. And through that, you make a transaction. Yeah. Wow. I think that's interesting. That's really yeah. interesting. Is it the machine economy that you kind of envision? Yes, yeah, so, so, so our, our vision of the machine economy goes much beyond that, right? Uh -huh. So, so, so it, it's, it's really about, about making it possible for, for, for machines to trade any resource with each other. So one machine has access computation, storage, bandwidth, and it needs to be able to sell this to another machine on demand. Uh -huh. And I always really the, the micro payment settlement layer for this. Uh -huh. and, and the beauty of this machine economy is, is now a machine is no longer limited to its hardware. So it can go beyond even its hardware, all it needs is, is its own wallet. So a machine becomes its own economic agent. Right. It has eight kilobytes of RAM, whatever, mm -hmm. but it can buy computation that is as much like a supercomputer. All it needs is, is the ability to pay. Okay. And it's incredibly interesting for any like, software developer now, because now you, you can think much beyond just hardware. Mm -hmm. You can think like, hey, like, I have this tiny device, but I don't care the hardware, about the hardware specification. I can do all of these different things. And like it's it's really like also changing the mindset of application developers, and I think through that we are truly unleashing the Internet of Things, because mm -hmm. everything else really doesn't work. Okay. We need to have those, those autonomous economic agents mm -hmm. for the Internet of Things to work. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we, we want to replace humans, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do we? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so why why not make it possible for them to pay each other? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. We're slowly replacing humans. I mean. Uh, <laughs> Hey, just just quick, just really quickly. I don't know if people can hear me, but there's been several questions from the viewers. That I yeah. don't know if you all take time to answer them. How many viewers do we have? Uh, right now, currently we have around uh, seventy viewers right now. Yeah. Okay. So are you okay? Are you okay with answering some of the questions? Yeah, of course. Okay. So the first question comes from uh, Mr. Mr. Said Saidi. He says, uh, "Energy is going to invest one point two billion dollars. Is a part of that investment involved with IOTA?" says the source is Reuters. I can't answer these questions. Okay, you don't have to answer that question. Next <laughs> one. Um, uh, GeekX says that if it's, he wants to ask if it's right that the classic blockchain is still better in administrative and logistic applications and IOTA DAG is only better in financial applications. Right? No, not at all. Not at all. So, 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 so. Also, also blockchains are always limited when it comes to, to, to some of the use cases that, that banks and so on and so forth are developing. So our focus with IOT is two things. Uh, data security, so anything that has to do with the uh, uh, supply chain, you, you want to secure the data. Like it's all the trend, what is happening along the supply chain. So you have this chain of custody. But that IOT is perfect. Mm -hmm. And then there's also machine to machine payments. Also remittances are, are super relevant for IOT and so on and so forth. You know. yeah. But we, we still have to figure out like, what works for this use case, what works for that use case. Okay. Yeah. Okay, two more questions. Uh, Myung Kid asks, Test text messengers have been developed on the Tangle. Would email leveraging Tangle tech make sense? At least this would help support the network. I'm not sure if it makes sense. Like, like it would help support the network, but I'm, I'm not sure of the use case. Like, like why would you want to input your, your email, make it tamper proof <laughs> with IOTA? <laughs> yeah. But, but we, we have a text messenger based on IOTA, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, that is, that is super cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ida Smart, the final question. She says, is blockchain named in the Trusted Alliance press releases from Bosch, Cisco, and Energy a marketing name for the Tangle and IOTA? I think this is similar to the very first question. Oh, I don't know. So, so, so you mean because of the synonym uh, or, or the acronym that, that the Trusted IT Alliance is using? I, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I think that was kind of like unintentional. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but we're working with the Trusted IT Alliance, so yeah. yeah it's completely accidental, right? Probably, yeah. Okay. Probably the acronym makes kind of sense for them. All right. Toyota. All right, cool. Okay, yeah. let's get back to the um, question of Tangle. So what are the uh, major attack factors of the um, security of Tangle? Yeah, so, so probably parasite chains. Also, also, like one of the other major ones is like withholding transactions, so, so that you start having confirmation issues. Right now with your coordinator, for example. Mm -hmm. And, and, and most of them are, are mentioned in the white paper. So what we're doing right now is we're redoing most of those simulations that we did in 2015 with the supercomputer. And we're writing up a new white paper which is going to go in depth into some of the attack vectors and how IO is able to, to like circumvent them. Okay. Yeah. 
which is well when or when is that when will that white paper so so we will have a teaser ready probably within two weeks so bartos who is was one of the researchers that recently joined the team is going, going to publish some of the simulation results mm -hmm. so those are really going to be really really interesting right okay. but we're, we're, everything that we do like we are like really perfectionists so, so it sometimes takes a lot of time to, to like get the graphics done and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a really uh, cool graphics. Yeah, yeah, sorry, is good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So I think uh, as far as I know, the ITA is more like a payment network for the Internet of Things devices. And security. Can, yeah, and security or identity. Like, yeah. can you support like smart contract functionality between? So, so right now we are making it possible to enforce timestamps and IOTA, and through that you could, and okay. support uh, smart contracts. Okay. But we also work on interoperability with other smart contracts. Yes. But our focus is is really to make ad hoc protocols, a protocols that do one thing and do one thing really, really well. And IOTA does does this transaction settlement really, really well. And and then we can start building other protocols. Okay. So. Then your focus is on like uh, security and transactional settlement. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, okay. I don't know if that's possible, but do you? It's like, is there any way to like formally verify the um, say security of a thing? So, so, so we're working on, on, on making some better proofs as well. Mm -hmm. So that so, so we have uh, three mathematicians right. uh, from from Brazil. Right. One of them is always Sergey Popov, mm -hmm. and who's the professor, and so, so this is also part of the new white paper right. to convince some of the uh, skeptics. Right. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, I think it's really um, isn't it sometimes really hard to um, convince people that it actually works? Yeah. So 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 the thing is about this blockchain space is there's no security framework, so you can't compare IOTA with blockchain because like apples versus oranges, and and. You, you can base the security on on the so on, on on the fact that we've been live for more than a year one and a half, on I think one and a half years now, right. and we have a market cap of one point something billion. So mm -hmm. there's a huge incentive for someone to attack us, and we were just attacked like I think two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Someone was trying to really like disrupt the network, right. and and but we are able to like really bypass those and, and survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, do you see any problems? But, but one okay. thing to emphasize is everything is a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is a proof of concept, Ethereum is a proof of concept, IO is a proof of concept. Everyone has to prove themselves and actually build something that works in production. Because nothing works in production today. It's all just like playing around right now. Right. Yeah. So I think the, um, the impression that I got is the, uh, the Tangle as a data structure itself is inherently scalable. So. Uh, do you need like other like scalability solutions like Lightning Network or like sharding or other stuff? So 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 so, so not not inherently. But but what we're doing is we we're developing. So so we're probably gonna announce Flash tomorrow. Uh -huh. And what Flash is 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 like this layer two layer uh, uh, layer two solution for instant payments. So we always say that IO is general purpose and Flash is like use case specific. Like for example, token streaming between the EV charging station and the car. But then you would start using Flash because it makes a ton of sense to use it for that. So is Flash like a Lightning Network? Right? Yeah, exactly. Like Lightning Network for IOTA or Cooler. Okay. Yeah. But, but it's not a network right now. So, so right now it's Flash channels. Because the problem with, with networks is obviously, uh, it's, it's with Lightning Network, it's with, with the RAID Network, it's, it's the uh, routing problem. So nobody has solved it, solved it, and I doubt anyone will solve it anytime soon. Which is why we are focusing on really like these bi-directional payment channels. It's not you, uh, you. You can't just hop from one 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 node to another node and to another node. It's really just between two parties. Wow. And for that, the use case makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, I, so it's um, but one of the things that the Lightning Network uses in the Bitcoin blockchain is that it uses the uh, it 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 utilizes the uh, function of timestamping, right? Time lock. Um, Functionality, but like partly out that doesn't have it. So do you do you see do you have no problem? It's just gonna have it's gonna have time sense as well. So we can enforce okay. those things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for yeah. the flash channel to be implemented, you need a time step. No, no, we don't need it. Okay. Yeah. But you have different security assumptions then, obviously. Yeah. If, if someone goes away and they kind of disincentivize. Uh -huh. Because okay. they, they lose their deposit. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's go back to the languages, like do you have like how many different Kind of so right now we have three which are in active development, so Java, C++, and Rust. Okay. 
So we're focusing on those, and especially Rust. Uh -huh. It's also part of IOTA being more production ready because Java client is also one of the main like, bottlenecks right now. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're working on new clients. Okay. Uh, is there any reason why you use Rust? Why focus, just, focus on Rust. Yeah, like, like it makes a lot of sense for the security mm -hmm. and also for the scalability. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's also IT friendly. Your privacy is another issue in the um, IoT devices. Like, how do you? So apparently, the Bitcoin blockchain is like so. It's not very private. Yeah. Right? Not so either. yeah, but I use high like I, from the IoT devices, the privacy is more serious problem. So, but, but I wouldn't say so because the thing is, uh, privacy. Think about having thousands, millions of transactions per second, and it's all just micropayments. And and then good luck finding out who does what. And and that is also like kind of one privacy component of it, but 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 it's also not a very strong one. Mm -hmm. But what we're developing or, or right now is this tumbling service on top of IO. So mm -hmm. we're doing that together with UCL, where, where one of the students is developing this, and through that we, we were really going to enable privacy in IO as well. Mm -hmm. And once zero knowledge proofs are IoT friendly, mm -hmm. we'll probably think about integrating that somehow as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think most of your most of the technologies that you use is kind of a shares kind of dramatic departure from the conventional sort of blockchain industry. Well, conventional blockchain industry uses. Yeah, right. One of them um, has had recently had issues, right? It's like partly the core, the um, the oh, yeah, yeah. match function. Right, right. You developed to say, say, can you elaborate on like why you choose to develop your own hash function and right. what was the problem? Right, so, so, so we needed a new trinary based hash function. Yeah. And the thing about IT is, is this, this screen field where, where you can't use like very complex crypto yeah. because it's, it's just way too, too, too uh, computationally heavy. Right. And it actually takes a few seconds for you to generate an address, for example. And, and, and also, like in an era where the NSA is able to really dictate NIST standards, yeah. you, you, it's, it's, you can't just go with this, like you control your own crypto. The thing is, like, like we, we did do some unconventional things, but, but we are really on this path to, to, to invest a lot of money to, to really go uh, peer review code and then also standardize it as a really IT friendly hash function. So we are still like, fully committed to curl and we're going to further develop it and we're going to probably invest like more than a million dollars. Okay. So we've just hired five cryptographers. Five? Yeah. So, so wow. Five which are like specifically uh, uh, have their expertise with sponge functions for IoT. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, when I was looking at your blog, I mean, it's like every now and then, like, there's a post saying, like, um, some of the researchers, developers that like, come into your team, like, yeah. so what are, so you, you, you seem to have, like, quite a big team. How many team members do you have? So, right, the, the core core team is, is really around 30 people. Okay. Yeah, but, but the thing is, we couldn't hire anyone for the last two months. Because uh, we, were, we were finalizing the IOTA Foundation setup. Okay. So we had to transfer the tokens that we had to the IOTA Foundation. Right. And right now we're hiring a lot mm -hmm. to, to, to really build it out. So, so what we do with the IOTA Foundation is we do to, to kind of the hardcore protocol development, which, which is always like only a few people can really do it. Yeah. But we also do this ecosystem development. So, so we, we I have business developers right. hired by the IOTA Foundation. Which they are really to, to, to get startups and especially corporates, also governments into our ecosystem to build something. Mm -hmm. uh, which, which is why so, so we're also going to set up a, an, an office in Chicago, mm -hmm. probably one somewhere in Asia, mm -hmm. and we have one in Oslo and Berlin. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so we're really expanding globally. Yeah. Okay. What are your um, what are your firms sort of a main area of focus in terms of research? Research is, is really about uh, about uh, the tank itself, how we can further optimize it and, and make it really, really good. Mm -hmm. So there's still some, some work to do related to economic clustering and so on and so forth, for example. And, and, but there are also some other very interesting areas of research, like, like, like multi-party computation mm -hmm. and, and how we can like, combine a yoga with that and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah um, I think uh, it's good for our technical stuff. Let's move on to machine economy. So yeah. I want to know like what kind of features are you envisioning with in terms of like with IoT devices, machine economy? Yeah, so, so, so like I said before, machines really transacting with each other and, and yeah. just selling resources, selling data. Right. And, and, and the main thing that really drives us is this bottom-up intelligence. So, so, so that 
through this, this economic transfers of between machines, you, you start really having adaptive and very intelligent networks that, that make smart decisions collectively. And, and, and so the biggest applications that we think of is, is data marketplace, where machines start selling data with each other, computation markets, mm -hmm. and, and also any other resource like bandwidth, mm -hmm. access to bandwidth, storage, and computation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so, uh, 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 electricity as well. Electricity. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So do you envision IoT being the uh, de facto currency for... IoT yeah, it's just, it's just so one thing. To, yeah, exactly. So one thing to emphasize that I'm, we are really not a huge fan of those utility tokens. So okay. what's what's the point of, of having a, a, a electricity token? What's the point of having a data token? The thing is, what you start doing is you start completely fragmenting the ecosystem. Now you have a token for each of these these different resources, and the problem is that that doesn't scale. Because now you have huge interoperability issues, and now a machine needs to have like ten different wallets mm -hmm. just to be able to participate in this machine economy. Mm -hmm. And and we see IOTA truly as the backbone of this machine economy. And we see the IOTA token can be there for all of this value transfer. So it makes more sense to have one token versus all of those different utility tokens. Okay. Which is why all of these recent ICOs are like kind of stupid. <laughs> yeah, that kind of makes sense. Uh, so, uh, do you think that the IoT can be used um, not just for the machines, but as humans as well, just like Bitcoin? Yeah, of course, absolutely. absolutely. So, 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 we see, or oh, like I personally see Bitcoin as like the digital gold, like it's really there to be the storage of value, mm -hmm. most of it. And IOTA is there to do, achieve this vision of transaction settlement. Right. So, so that you can pay your Starbucks <coughs> coffee or something like that with IOTA. So, you probably wouldn't pay with IOTA, but it's kind of like the backbone, the, the, the protocol behind it. Mm -hmm. so, so, we're doing a lot with web payments. Like for example, with the Satoshi Pay demo, where you can now start paying per article that you read, yeah. or, or more interesting stuff is also remittances. So yeah. you can start transferring money around globally, and IOTA makes a ton of sense for these, these yeah. things. Right. So, so one thing to to emphasize is we are really focused on the internet of things because we like it, and, and and we see a lot of potential in early adoption there. But there's so many other applications that for for which IOTA is really good for, and we're not just about IoT. Yeah, particularly like if you have a really high throughput and like geo transaction yeah. fee, that's like, say like exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's good to be true. Yeah, like, 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 like which is reliability of the network is 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 truly compelling to use it. Right. Yeah. Uh, the more users participants you have, uh, do you expect the more secure your sort of the top platform becomes? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, this is one of the main security assumptions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so go back. Um, we want to the question about ICO. Uh, when and how? When was your first ICO and how was it? You mean when I personally participated? Uh, or, no, no, with, no. With, for IOTA. With, with, with IOTA, we did it in twenty fifteen, uh -huh. and and so we raised like a half million dollars, okay. which which is nothing, mm -hmm. right? And and it was quite crazy because we we know people that type stuff, and some other projects raised like a few million dollars. Yeah. So you you kind of think like fuck. <laughs> uh, but, but with just 500k, we, we then had to build IOTA, right? Yeah, right. And, and it was fucking difficult, but we survived. And, and now IOTA has become one of the most profitable ICOs for those who participated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's huge return on investment. Yeah. yeah. But like the same question, the question can be like, that leaves not much money for the foundation. Exactly. So, so one thing to emphasize is that we're kind of like very honest people. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we didn't allocate any tokens to us when we did the ICO. Like normally, what ICOs do these days, or what Ethereum did back then, they said like, hey, like seventeen percent of all the tokens go to the foundation to the founders. Right. And sometimes these days they take like fifty percent, which is just stupid, ridiculous. And and we we, we sold completely one hundred one hundred percent with those five hundred k. And so we as founders also had to participate in the ICO in order to get tokens. Also, we wouldn't have gotten any tokens. Mm -hmm. and, and what we did with the community then is we said, hey, like, if you want to have an IOTA foundation, you need to donate. And so through that, we raised like 5 to 6% of the total supply. Mm -hmm. And that's how the foundation is run right now. So, so it's like 50, 70 million dollars right now. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so it's good. Okay. But we had to fucking work to make that money valuable, right? Right, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How about the um, initial token distribution was like? So 100% of the token were all distributed at the point of ICO. Yeah. Okay. The like, how can I participate in the ecosystem? I mean, so you have 
It's like maybe it's additional supply now. Exactly. So so right. we, we will never have more. So it's okay. always like like, like uh, 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 in order to participate, you would also have to buy tokens. Or, or right. what we also have is this ecosystem fund, which is like ten million dollars. So if you want to build something, you can apply to the ecosystem fund and, and get paid in tokens. But doesn't that leave you taking too much concentrated on the hands of you? So so that's just the argument with everything, with every cryptocurrency. Like, like it's it's always the early adopters that start benefiting from it, from from, from the later adopters. Right. And there's no no solution to that. It's it's, a, right. it's an equally big problem or even bigger problem in Bitcoin where we have these huge whales. Ethereum as well, where, where some of speculators have like five to ten percent of the supply. Right. And IOT was very like, like on this ICO, uh, 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 ICO which was very like distributed. And there's some really cool stats about that, how how, how many people uh, got to uh, participated, how it was distributed, uh, and, and yeah. Yeah, but still like the Bitcoin Ethereum, they still have additional supplies. Like right, right, right. Market. But that that raises other problems, right? Because now, now you have problems like, like hey, those, those other miners are really like pushing down the nut market. They're, they're creating new tokens yeah. and so on and so forth. But Ethereum is also going to have a fixed supply once they implement proof of stake, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. But so we we try to think about of a technical solution that we can also like mint new coins, mm -hmm. new tokens. But but we didn't come up. We 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 didn't think of anything good. Okay. Yeah. Um. Then like. It just say I just um it, the question about the fork. I mean, Bitcoin and Ethereum they do fork. Like, can I attack? No, cannot get forked. No, you can't. It's just those partition tolerant, right? right. So it's in, in in the blockchain, if you fork, you can't go back in again. And in IOTA, if you fork, it's just kind of like this partitioning, and then then you can go back in again. So, so you can't like create two separate networks in that sense. You would have to completely like take the source code and and set up a completely new network in that sense. Okay. But you can't just code, so suddenly have two IOTA tokens, one IOTA A and IOTA B. Okay, uh, that's very interesting. What if like people, some group of people, as your ecosystem mature, some group of people doesn't like the way you kind of develop it, and then they want to afford it, what should they do? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it happens, right? It happens. Do you want to create a fork? I mean, I mean, okay, well, no. I mean people, people may disagree. People may disagree. No, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, so they, don't, they might want... They might uh want they might not want trinary, they might want binary. Yeah, so, so then you just have to take the, the the source code and create a completely new network and, and try to get people to adopt it. So 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 the thing about forking is obviously uh, the security of the system depends on the number of, of participants. So if you fork you start having serious security issues because now the security is no longer it's it's half, right? Potentially. And and so that's that's a problem. Okay. And and so forking in IO is not possible. Mm -hmm. Which is good. <laughs> because forking, in my opinion, forking is also one of the main reasons why it's difficult to standardize a blockchain protocol. Because okay. you have to take into account this kind of governance. Mm -hmm. And IOTA is a very, very simple protocol, and as such, it's much faster and easier to standardize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you about the future plans. You, you mentioned about standardization. So, like, what, what, what kind of effort are you putting um, to make your system? Uh, a standard. So, yes, yeah, so, so, so our main intention is to go away from proof of concept towards so production readiness, mm -hmm. and and one one part of production readiness is, is economic clustering. The other one is really to to have a, a, a client that is really performant and has been vetted, and the third one is really standardization. So so we have some very good partnerships lined up for that for for the, for the standardization. We've already begun working on it, mm -hmm. and and we are really trying to push that. In, into the space, so, so so that's really crucial for for, for the adoption of IOTA. Yeah, um, who are the major stakeholders um, in terms of standardization? Who need to pursue it? Do do have to answer that? <laughs> so, so so obviously like corporates and 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 just standardization bodies themselves. Right. And because at the end of the day, you need to have corporates that 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 are going to use it, that that adopt the standards. Right. Yeah. And and so we have some very good partners with that. Yeah, yeah. We're pursuing the standardization together with us. Mm -hmm. So we've already kind of convinced them, the early adopters. Then, then it becomes like, once the standard is issued, then it has to really become a global standard, not just European or just Asian. It really has to become global. That's quite tricky. The other tricky thing about the standardization is that you kind of start cannibalizing your own business model mm -hmm. with IOTA. Mm -hmm. like, so, so not business model, but like your own like, like goal, vision. Because if, if we standardize IOTA, obviously what could happen is, is then corporates set up their own private tenants. 
about, but every time we speak with the corporate these days, it's like we say, like, hey, are you going to adopt the IOTA token? Or we're not going to, go on, we're not going to work with you. Because the thing about this machine economy can only work if we have this widespread interoperability with the IOTA tokens. Mm -hmm. We have this, this backbone where every machine knows, hey, like, I can pay the other machine because it accepts the IOTA token. Right. For example, with, with EV charging today, electric vehicle charging today, we have five different blocks, mm -hmm. standards. And that's a huge interoperability challenge. And we don't want to replicate the same issues with, with, with this machine economy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so standardization is truly crucial, but you also have to treat it with care. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, what are your, uh, some of the future plans in terms of uh, development? And are, are we going to see some cool stuff? Uh, in the future, so yeah. You mentioned yeah. about flash channels. Yes, yeah, so, so flash channels is really cool. So that's going to launch tomorrow, so you can play around with the live demo. Huh. I think m mostly cool stuff that we have lined up is really just corporate partnerships okay. that we're going to announce and, and like really specific use cases. My my main intention is we really have to like mainstream applications run on the Yoda, uh -huh. so that you have thousands of devices and, and like really serious like applications being built with the Yoda. But, but when it comes to the tech itself, like privacy is one of the major milestones, then more clients. And then obviously also making it production ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, so that we have IOTA in the browser, we have IOTA in our machines, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So, so this widespread adoption. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's go back to um, the problem of standardization. Many of the um, economic incentive probably for the IoT device manufacturer is to um, the best strategy might be to own the data yeah. generated from the IoT devices. They might want to own the data, which will be profitable. Right. But to use the blockchain, you need to kind of like share the data freely in the marketplace. You don't need to share it. You can okay. sell it. Okay. It's actually still own it. But, 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 the, but the data really will be owned by the users. Right, right, right. So it will still be owned by the users. So, 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 so we, especially in Germany, we're going to have like some much more serious data protection laws. And, but the interesting thing for, for corporates in this data marketplace is that it's truly, truly something very unique. Because now we start having a completely new business model mm -hmm. where, where you, you have this excess of data and you can just start selling it. And another company might need it. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very interesting because at the end of the day, corporates want to make money. Mm -hmm. And you, if you give them a, an application where they can really start making money, mm -hmm. they start realizing like, hey, like, like we should look more seriously at this stuff. And, and I personally see this data marketplace as one of the killer applications of the other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Um, okay, Shania, do you have any more questions from the viewers? Yeah, we got, we got quite a few questions from the viewers. Yeah, let's take right. them and then yeah, we'll finish and get them. All right. Okay, so I, I, I'm not going to ask any of the questions that were asked before or were repeating. First of all, Dom, what are, some, what are your views on table being used for point of sales? Yeah, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. So it's definitely doable. The, the, the main difficulty is always like, how do you get into that market? Yeah. So, so, so uh, when, when it comes to China, uh, they didn't have any point of sale systems before the last, I think, three or four years. The search for, for Alipay and Zona support was like super simple to get into this market and completely conquer it. And, and with IOTA, we don't have that, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we still have to figure out a strategy that makes sense there. So we are, we are not people that say like, hey, like, so, so, so the problem of blockchain people or startups most, most, of the, most of the time in this space, they say like, hey, like, there's this grandiose idea, let's, let's pursue it. Most of them don't understand that you really have to figure out how to really get there, how to yeah. implement it. And, and we assessed that, like we really thought about these, these things more thoroughly and, and the end of the things is really one of those areas where we have this potential to, to really be this early adopter and, and conquer the market through that. But point of sale makes a lot of sense. Like if you have any context to one of the POS manufacturers, it makes sense to talk with them. Yeah, I think this question fits in really nicely mm -hmm. with the next one, which is like the role of the role that IOTA will be plays in the trust IoT alliance. Yeah, so, so we are definitely one of the participants and one of the technology providers. So we are setting up a, a new testnet on them so you can start playing around with it. And we were also collaborating on these use cases. One of the major things that we want to get out of the trusted IT analysis is really is interoperability. Mm -hmm. And I personally also want to start figuring out like really which blockchain, which tangle makes sense for which use case. Mm -hmm. Obviously, IOTA can run on a much lower level than anyone, anything else. As such, we're already starting to work with Hyperledger and some support in some use cases. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Uh, 
guys are, oh, okay, crap, okay. Yeah. That's, quite, that's quite cool. Um, I think this is a value competitor. What do you think about Walton Chain? Walton Chain, what's yeah, that? Yeah, it's, it's, like it's like a new thing that came up very, very recently. Okay. Yeah. I like, don't you know. Don't, you don't know anything about it. I mean, it, ha it, it has chain in its name, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, never mind. Well, we'll skip that question. Um, so this is about this is going back to the smart contract idea. So, so the last iota timestamp paper stated that it is a probabilis probabilistic approach, and therefore you cannot be hundred percent sure about the order. Yeah. How can this be used as a basis for smart contracts, which requires to have a discrete order on the ledger? And if not so. What is the main thing about probabilistic timestamps? So, so, so I'm not an expert on timestamps. You would have to ask Sergey about that. But when it comes to smart contracts, it's like layer two approach in that sense. So, but I can't comment more about that. Okay. And uh, this one is: Does the IOTA Foundation support open source hardware leveraging Tangle technology? Yes. Do you have any hard open source hardware? Not right now. Not right. Ah, uh, you mean if if we work like with with. Ah, you mean like with open source projects themselves? Yeah, open source hardware projects. Oh, okay, okay. I thought if we are going to put up open source hardware, which which we're also going to do, but so we we don't leverage with anyone right now. But we're definitely interested to talk with some of them. Yeah. But it's kind of too busy. Right yeah. Now, so, so there's too much work. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I, there were quite a few questions about like artificial intelligence and neural networks. Are you guys involved with that at all? Yes. You are. Oh, yes, yeah, so, so, so we're really also into machine learning and, and like combining IOTA with AI to, to really like make sure, think about like some of the new applications that you can build with it. And the interesting thing about IOTA is that it's a very self-regulating system because it, it can really adapt to its network. Yeah. But we, we have some really good contacts and then we're going to leverage them to build some partnerships here. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that was, that's all the questions. That is Thank cool. You. Yeah, I've got just like one last question. I mean, Tangle, the other stuff that's quite a unconventional, as mentioned it, like, lot. Like, where do you get those inspiration from? Like, you and your founders. Uh, so, 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 you mean, so it kind of makes sense, right? It's the most logical step after blockchain. <laughs> but how did you make, no, I don't think so. I mean, like, not many people have thought about making blockchain into like, right, right, like right. Tangle. Yes, yeah, so, so so the thing is like like Sergey is a mathematician, right. so so he knows all about graph theory and so on and so forth. It makes okay. wow. for for him it makes a lot of sense to think about like hey like, like we have the sequential chain why why don't you do a DAG? Right. Try try to make a DAG work. So so him and Sergey even Sergey like, really came together to come up with a very sound technical solution. Okay. And that's how it came to be. So so it's a very pragmatic approach. Like you start with a problem and you come up with a solution. Right. Yeah. We we didn't we didn't one day wake up and think like DAGs. <laughs> it was yeah. just like, hey, like there's this problem that we really need to solve. Right. Yeah. I, I personally have this theory that the majority of the people in the blockchain space, they're they're probably like high as fuck on something. Yeah. When you come up with a brilliant <laughs> like all the names like Ethereum, no offense, but like Ethereum Plus, and like I'm pretty sure like you had not have to be been smoking something. <laughs> so we like, did same not. Thing with IOTA, so we did not. Thing. Yeah. Uh, all right. Just one. Just one more thing. Um, People, the, the viewers want to know about exchanges. Okay. Well, uh, I guess two questions. One, Soon? What, what is, why in the world is IOTA not on exchanges? Yeah. And on a lot of exchanges. And number two is, what have you been doing in Korea in regards to exchanges? And <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here for a holiday ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go to the Yeah, <laughs> no, no, so, 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 so. The thing about all of these exchanges is that they have like very, difficult operational issues sometimes. And every exchange that we spoke with, like they obviously really like IOTA, they say like, like we definitely want to list it. But they say like, hey, it will take a few months for us to list it because we have these internal scalability yeah. issues, yeah. resource limitations, and so on and so forth. And, and we always say that we're like fucking unlucky. Uh, so, so every time we talk with an exchange, they say like, yeah, like, hey, we, we can't list it. We were trying to be listed on Binance like two or three weeks ago, and then all of the China stuff happens. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, it's just like, yeah, shit happens, right? right. Yeah, but, but we're, our intention is really by the end of the year that all of the major exchanges okay. are going to list IOTA, yeah. have listed IOTA. Right. Yeah. Would, it, would it make sense because you guys are so high up on the market? Now. Yeah, exactly. And we're, we're, we're probably one of the most legit projects in this space. Like, there's Ethereum and IOTA, which are probably the two only legit ones. That are really about there to get shit done, and and we are really like <laughs> have some serious adoption. 
I think we have a best friend, so it's back to differ. But, <laughs> but we'll take your answer. <laughs> Do you want to video with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. Okay. You wrap it up? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, is there anything you want to say to the viewers before we finish the interview? Uh, so, 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 what's really important for us is really to build this ecosystem. So have people participate, like do startups. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, like you can, one way to make money is through the tokens. Sure, like it's speculation. Mm -hmm. But what's much more sustainable is like if you really try to be an entrepreneur and build something with it. Right. And, and we really want to support people. That's why I was talking about that with the IOTA Foundation, we want to foster this permissionless innovation mm -hmm. so that young entrepreneurs can really build stuff with IOTA, create new applications, and start making money with that as well, right? like solving problems for other people. Right. And, and yeah, so some encouraging people to just build something. Mm -hmm. like, like, there's this mentality, like, let's do it. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Well, it was a great interview, Dominic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming today for the interview. Yeah. Yeah, um, you want to... No, close it up. Okay. Close it up. I really close it. it. <laughs> <laughs> you go with your hand yeah. in front. Okay. Yeah, yeah. guys, uh, this was Dominic from Iron Top Projects. We had a very good interview about Tangle and other stuff. Uh, this is the Blockchainers. Uh, my name is Youngwon. So we uh, showcase, we did the interview about the uh, hot guys in the blockchain space. So just keep watch, watch our shows, please. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. <laughs>